Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Exercise Science Lab to show you how to do waist and hip circumference measurements. So each of those measurements can be used to estimate somebody's uh, risk due to their uh, weight status. Um, and they can also be used together to calculate the waist-hip ratio, which also tells you a little bit about their risk due to things like obesity and the type of obesity. So in order to perform the waist circumference measurement, what you're going to want to do is have the person either remove their shirt or lift their shirt high enough where you can easily see uh, the area between essentially the bottom of the rib cage and the top of the hip bones. And then what you're going to have them do is face away from you so that you can look at the uh, shape of their torso from behind them. And so what you're going to be looking for is the most narrow part of the, the waist, so the, the area um, where you kind of have that hourglass type shape if you're somebody who's lean. Again, you're looking for the most narrow part of the waist and you're gonna wrap the, um, the measuring tape around that and then measure wherever you have the overlap between the tape, so where the zero line of the tape overlaps with the uh, whatever the number is on the other side of the tape measure. So you wanna make sure that you do this from behind the person and not from the side or the front of the, of the individual. The reason not to do it from the side is you can't really see that hourglass type shape. The reason not to do it from the front is it just makes it a little more awkward for the individual because um, it's a little bit of a personal invasion of privacy. So it's best if you do it from behind. The hip measurements are very similar to the waist measurements, but you're just measuring a little lower on the body. And so for this, make sure that their feet are completely together. So if they're not together, you're going to get an artificially inflated um, hip measurement. So have their feet together, and then you're going to stand, instead of behind them like you did for the waist measurement, you're going to stand to the side of them. So pick either side, it doesn't matter. And so you're going to find the largest protrusion of the buttocks, and that's where you're going to be measuring the hip measurement. All right, so they're going to have to see where the, uh, the butt essentially comes out and curves, and before it starts to curve back down, that's where we're going to be doing the measurement. So again, for the waist, it was the narrowest part of the waist. For the hip, it is the largest part of the hip. So if you're trying to do a waist to hip ratio, all you have to do is then take the waist measurement and divide it by the hip measurement. All right, so it's a very quick and simple thing to do, and it's going to give you an estimate of um, whether they are um, at an elevated risk uh, due to their sort of body shape. All right, so somebody with more android obesity, so more obesity in the abdomen, is going to be at a higher risk than somebody with more gynoid type obesity which is more carrying your fat in your hip or your butt region. All right, so super easy measurement to make, uh, really, really fast. And the equipment is just a simple piece of flexible measuring tape, so it's really, really easy to do. All right, so if you have any questions or comments, you can put those in the comments section below, and I'll try to get back to you. Otherwise, please come back and watch another video. Thanks.